Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Ignition Time. A conservative Democrat, the one and only, the famous or the infamous Joe Manchin. There he is. What's up, Joe? The infamous conservative Democrat from West Virginia, Joe Manchin, could crush the entire liberal agenda, the liberal democratic agenda for the Biden administration. In this video, I'm going to cover a very important set of comments, actually an article written by Joe Manchin, where he reveals what his ideologies are. And I will tell you how this has the potential to affect the future of the Biden administration economically from an infrastructure standpoint, because without the support of the conservative senator from West Virginia, the Biden administration is not going to be able to pass the infrastructure package through budget reconciliation. But first, let's get started with essentially a view, a redefined view of infrastructure from the President of the United States. In some brand new comments, the President said, we now need to start looking at infrastructure through the eyes of the American people. The Democrats have been essentially redefining infrastructure as not just physical infrastructure, but also human infrastructure, investing in our people and essentially preparing America to help those who need help the most by investing in elder care, by investing in childcare and many other things. Let's roll the tape and hear from President Biden as he talks about the new definition of infrastructure. We need to start seeing infrastructure through its effect on the lives of working people in America. What is the foundation today that they need to carve out their place in the middle class, to make it, to live, to go to work, to raise their families with dignity, to ensure that good jobs will be there for their kids, no matter who they are or what zip code they live in? That's what infrastructure means in the 21st century. It still depends on roads and bridges, ports and airports, rail and mass transit, but it also depends on having reliable high-speed internet in every home, because today's high-speed internet is infrastructure. And to reiterate his point, the president said the idea of infrastructure has always evolved to meet the aspirations of the American people and it's evolving again today. Again, a redefinition of the phrase infrastructure as, as the Republicans gear up to combat this very notion of infrastructure. I'll get to that in just a second. First, let's hear from President Biden. Now, since I announced this plan, I've heard from my Republican friends uh, say that it's, many of them say it's too big. They say, why not focus on traditional infrastructure? Fix what we've already got, the roads and the highways that exist and the bridges. I'm happy to have that debate. But I want to tell you my view. We are America. We don't just fix for today. We build for tomorrow. 200 years ago, trains weren't traditional infrastructure either, until America made a choice to lay down tracks across the country. Highways weren't traditional infrastructure, until we allowed ourselves to imagine that roads could connect our nation across state lines. The idea of infrastructure has always evolved to meet the aspirations of the American people and their needs. And it's evolving again today. Now, here's something interesting, and we'll show you these two images on your screen right now, and you can be the judge for yourself. President Biden's $2.2 trillion infrastructure plan includes $400 billion. Yep. $400 billion for elder care. Now, Senator Marsha Blackburn, the Republican, said, President Biden's proposal is about anything but infrastructure. And what the Democrats did is take that exact same image, $400 billion towards elder care and say, the president's jobs plan, the American jobs plan, makes much needed improvements in caregiving, giving seniors and people with disabilities the care they need while giving care workers the raise they deserve. Now, I want you to look at the two points of view on your, on your screen right now. One is a view from a Republican and one is a view from a Democrat. Which view do you agree with? Do you agree with the expanded definition of infrastructure or do you agree with, as Senator Marsha Blackburn points out, the traditional definition of infrastructure? In other words, it's only physical infrastructure, roads and bridges. And here's an interesting tweet from Jonathan Martin, who's a national political correspondent for The New York Times. He's actually retweeting Andrew Bates, who's the White House Deputy Press Secretary, and Gary Cohn, who's a very, very well-known, highly respected economist who was a Trump advisor and who actually served as the director of the National 
Economic Council and Chief Economic Advisor to former President Trump from 2017 to 2018 before he resigned following the Charlottesville incident. And uh, this is what Gary Cohn said. Again, this is a very intelligent person who knows quite a lot about the economy and infrastructure. And this is what Gary Cohn said. I'm actually okay at 28%. The level we got to in our tax plan in the corporate side was actually a bit lower than we needed to. Gary Cohen is saying that we, meaning the former Trump administration, cut corporate taxes lower than they should have. And he said, I always thought that a compromise rate in the mid 20s makes sense. In other words, Gary Cohn is saying, hey, it should have been in the mid 20s to begin with. Now let's shift gears to the one and only conservative senator from West Virginia, Joe Manchin. In an opinion piece on the Washington Post website, Joe Manchin wrote this, I will not vote to eliminate or weaken the filibuster. Now here are some aspects of the Joe Manchin piece that really jumped out at me. Let's show you this. It's no accident that a state as small as West Virginia has the same number of senators as California or Texas, two senators per state. It goes to the heart of what representative government is all about. The founding fathers understood that the challenges facing a rural or small state would always be different from a more populous state. Designating each state with the same number of senators, regardless of the population, ensured that the rural and small states and the Americans who live in them would always have a seat at the table. Manchin also writes this, the time has come to end these political games and to usher a new era of bipartisanship where we find common ground on the major policy debates facing our nation. He also writes, generations of senators who came before us put their heads down and their pride aside to solve the complex issues facing our country. We must do the same. The issues facing our democracy today are not insurmountable if we choose to tackle them together. And this one really jumped out at me, folks. I simply do not believe budget reconciliation should replace regular order in the Senate. How is that good for the future? of this nation. Senate Democrats must avoid the temptation to abandon our Republican colleagues on important national issues. Republicans, however, have a responsibility to stop saying no and participate in finding real compromise with the Democrats. I have a question for you, my viewers and subscribers at Ignition Time, my beloved community. Do you think Joe Manchin is the only voice of reason in a gridlocked Senate. Do you feel he's the voice of reason when the Democrats are being far too liberal and when the Republicans are being far too conservative? Or do you think he should get in line with the Democrats and essentially do what the, the majority of the Democrats want to get done? Because he is, he is fundamentally trying to trying to bring both sides together while at the same time trying to be as reasonable as possible without swinging too far to the left. Let me know what you think of Joe Manchin's position. I'm actually keen to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. I also encourage you to click on the link in the description section below and read his entire article so you understand his point of view. And this is what Manchin writes about the filibuster and these are important comments. If the filibuster is eliminated or budget reconciliation becomes the norm, a new and dangerous precedent will be set to pass sweeping partisan legislation that changes the direction of our nation every time there is a change in political control. The consequences will be profound. Our nation may never see stable governing again. Folks, I can assure you that our, our competitors, our enemies like Russia and China look at this and are counting on division. They're counting on discord if we tend to get too extreme towards the left or the right. We need to be somewhere in the middle because the best ideas come about when the Republicans and the Democrats work together. And finally, Manchin ends by saying this, we will not solve our nation's problems in one Congress if we seek only partisan solutions. Manchin's trying to talk about the long-term future of our country, not just, not just the present in which we have a Democrat-led House and a Democrat-led Senate with a razor-thin majority. There will be a day when this changes. This is about trying to make ourselves stronger in the future and look around all the turns and all the challenges that lie in front of us as a country. This is what Manchin says in the end. Instead of fixating on eliminating the filibuster or shortcutting the legislative process through budget reconciliation, it is time we do our jobs. That's it, everyone. That was a review of the highlights of the Joe Manchin piece. I will provide you with a link to that article in the description section below. Let me know what you think of Joe Manchin, the conservative Democrat from West Virginia. Let me know whether you think he should essentially get in line and get on the same side as Chuck Schumer, the Senate majority leader. And I want to know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I want you to know I work hard for you on this channel every single day. My name is Dr. Nitin Shoda with 
ignition time. This right here is a little bit of information about me. You learn about my journey and how I was able to live the American dream. And I want to help you live the American dream. For me, it's not about the red or the blue. It's about the red, white and blue. I'm not Democrat. I'm not Republican. I'm American. We are all Americans first. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, please click the like button. Please subscribe. Please enable notifications. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Take care. Bye.